Hey everybody, JCB here at The Awesomest, and you're watching The Awesomest, Awesomest, Awesome List. So it's been about two weeks since the season six finale of The Walking Dead, and if you saw the episode, you're well aware that it's one of the most controversial cliffhangers in television history. It has enraged large portions of the internet, and I cannot wait to discuss it with you right now. Jeffrey Dean Morgan made his first appearance as Negan, and in a mere 10 minutes of screen time, completely stole the title of fan favorite away from Daryl. This guy is amazing. If you haven't seen the episode, I'm going to go ahead and issue a spoiler warning here, and that's spoilers for everything. The TV show, the comic, I might even spoil the video game just because I can. Things are about to get more spoiled in here than a rich kid on Christmas. So without any further ado, let's count down the top five Walking Dead finale theories. Number five, Eugene has outlived his usefulness. The mullet sporting, penis biting, former science teacher who managed to convince everyone to take a road trip to DC is the first on the chopping block. Or is that first in the batter's box? The season finale tied up basically every loose end in Eugene's story arc and put it in a nice bow. He even received an actual full-on hug from Abraham, putting one final nail in the proverbial coffin that is Eugene's storyline. The Walking Dead loves to kill off characters when they have one, completed a major story arc, two, outlived their usefulness, and three, will have the biggest impact on the overall story. Eugene just finished his main story arc, so unless he's now going to pull a carol and become a major badass over the next few seasons, there's not much for him to do other than become a full-time background character. As for impact on the rest of the group, it would mostly impact Abraham as he just came around to forgiving the little dick biter, but nothing motivates Rick Grimes like losing one of his people, even if that motivation is short-lived. I mean, they continued their trip to Virginia just because they owed it to Beth to bring Noah home. And let's not forget Dale's death back in season two. Now on, we're gonna do it his way. That is how we honor Dale. Yeah, about that. So the last thing Eugene did before getting captured was give Rick the ingredients for making his own ammo. This is the perfect setup, as now Rick will not only have a motivation for killing Negan, but he'll have plenty of ammo to help him do so. As Eugene said in one of the episodes, a full clip of ammo is a new currency in this world. And seeing as Alexandra isn't really mass producing food right now, bullets may be the bargaining chip they need to keep Negan happy while they prepare for war. In the comics, Eugene's brains and know-how do come in handy for a few more things, but the ammo was the really big one. So he's completed his story arc, outlived his usefulness, and his death would move the story forward quite a bit for Rick and the gang. There is also a fan theory that if you ignore the clever editing and just follow along with Negan's eeny, meeny, miny, mo in different ways, it stops on Eugene, but other people also say it stops on Daryl or Glenn, and some people even say it could be Michonne because she's the only one who doesn't get a second reaction shot, meaning the point of view must be from her. But I'm not sure I buy any of the theories that are based entirely on the editing of the episode. Considering all of these singles could have been shot as B-roll pickup footage intended to be used in any random order, you can't read too much into it. The editing of this scene was meant to be disorientating and confusing for the viewer. There are also quite a few continuity errors. For instance, here Negan walks all the way over to Daryl, and then it cuts and he's back in front of Rick. Clearly whoever is editing this is not concerned with anything but confusing the viewers and placing seeds of doubt and worry by moving the camera around from character to character. So unless you think Negan's playing the weirdest game of any Mini Mini Mo in history, running all the way from Daryl who's on his far left over to Sasha who's in the center instantly, pointing his bat at random people like a crazy person, I think you can dismiss that idea. Number four, Abraham can take it like a champ. So almost everything that made Eugene eligible for the bat can also be applied to Abraham. Only these two know where the group can mass produce bullets, unless the address is also written on that paper he gave to Rick. Abraham as a character has turned a corner recently, which on The Walking Dead is never a good sign. He's been pretty suicidal since the beginning with the hope of DC keeping him alive through season five or so when that all fell apart. In season six, he kind of came out of that funk and even started a little something with Sasha, another suicidal character who has come around thanks in part to her connection with Abraham. The two were even talking about pouring the Bisquick in the last episode. And nothing hurts more than a character getting killed at the peak of their hopefulness. So we have the conclusion of a character arc and an impact on the rest of the group, but I don't think Abraham would ever really outlive his usefulness. He's an ex-military man who can literally beat the crap out of anyone. That doesn't really stop being useful. Though there is one thing that is going against Abraham, and that's his comic book expiration date. In the comics, it was Abraham who took an arrow to the eye. And it kind of feels like they switched that death up for the sole purpose of making Abraham's death more meaningful later. And then there is the camera movement at the end of the episode, which is really the center of this fan theory. After getting hit by Lucille, whoever is on the receiving end of that bat collapses to the ground and then gets back up, to which Negan replies, taking it like a champ. 
camp, and realistically, Abraham is probably the only character who could take a strike like that and get back up for another swing. Pun intended. Pun very intended. Though I think this movement could also be construed as simply looking up toward Negan, not necessarily getting back up. Personally, I think you can dismiss an entire line as it was ripped directly from the comics, and in the comics it was applied to a different character. So I don't think that line, taking it like a champ, really applies to any specific person. It would have been said no matter who the show decided to kill. Also, I think the camera movement was done for dramatic effect, and that it's not really pointing to anything specific. Number three, we can deduce who died based on what we know. This one isn't so much a theory about a specific person dying, so much as it is a theory that we can weed out potential candidates based on the things we know. For instance, immediately after the episode aired, people claimed you could eliminate all of the female characters because of this line. As I said, basically Negan's dialogue was taken directly from the comic, and in the comic he does say he's taken it like a champ, but in the comic the victim's identity wasn't a secret. You knew who he was beating down. In the show, the pronoun is clearly missing, and I believe this change was made to protect the secret. So you can't just eliminate all of the female cast members based on this line. But there are other clues we can look for. On the after show, The Talking Dead, host Chris Hardwick brought up the fact that fans would likely be studying the footage to try to figure out where Negan was standing, and thus who he hit with Lucille. To which Scott Gimple replied that fans should study it because they put a few clues in there. Now The Talking Dead is a lot of things. It's entertainment, it's also a shameless cash grab by AMC to try to get more advertising revenue out of The Walking Dead without actually showing more Walking Dead, and it's also marketing propaganda. The entire show is an hour-long commercial for next week's episode of The Walking Dead. At no time is that role more apparent than immediately after a season finale. The Talking Dead's first priority is to get people to tune back in after the summer break. The entire discussion centers around what will happen in the season seven premiere and hyping up the fan speculation. So I do think some clues were probably included just to keep fans busy and keep them talking about the show over the course of the summer break. But forget camera angles, background objects, and lighting cues. The final bit was shot from the victim's point of view, which means the cameraman could have been sitting anywhere and pointed in any direction. A DP on set would have been more concerned with lighting and blocking than continuity with the lineup. Hell, they could have even filmed that final shot on a soundstage weeks later. Instead, we have to look for clues that were intentionally put there and eliminate people we know are safe. First, let's get the obvious out of the way. It won't be Rick. This is really Rick's story. We've been with Rick every step of the way. When he was shot and went into a coma, he missed the beginning of the zombie apocalypse, and because we're following Rick's story, we also missed the beginning of the zombie apocalypse. If Rick ever dies on the show, it will be the last episode. I think we can also dismiss Carl as a potential victim because as Negan is warming up for his big swing, he says, if anybody moves, anybody says anything, cut the boy's other eye out and feed it to his father. Then we'll start. This is clearly a threat to keep Rick or Carl from trying anything or moving and allow Negan to do his thing. If either one of them were right in front of him, he could take care of it himself. Also, referring to Rick and Carl as the boy and his father in this way strongly implies that neither Rick nor Carl are in the strike zone. Otherwise, Negan would likely have said something along the lines of cut his eye out and feed it to his father if it were Carl in front of him, or cut the boy's other eye out and feed it to him if Rick were in front of him. By referring to them both in this manner, he effectively places them both outside of the immediate situation. You could argue it was written that way to keep from giving too much away, but it would just be awkward for him to speak like that if either of them were right in front of him. The fact that he could take them out himself with the bat if they were right there, plus the fact that Rick and Carl are so central to the story, basically eliminates them from the lineup. I think you can also eliminate Maggie as she was carried in on a stretcher. I think as far as Negan is concerned, she's practically dead already, and he needs to make an impact with his first kill. In the comics, Negan doesn't kill women, and Maggie goes on to basically lead the hilltop. So if they're following the story of the comics, you can expect a similar situation here. There is a theory that the way Negan gestures when he mentions Rick and Carl implies that Rick is to one side of him, and Carl is on the other, placing Negan in the vicinity of Sasha and Aaron. This would make sense, but I think there are too many assumptions being made here. Negan could just be gesturing to some of his men, but mostly it kind of looks like he's just shaking his head as if he'd be disappointed if it came to that. And from a storytelling perspective, I think we can also eliminate Sasha. Her death is somewhat overdue, having little to no storyline of her own since Tyrese died, but her character arc is still forming, and her death wouldn't really have a huge impact at this point, at least not with fans. The same can be said for Aaron. He's too new of a character and we haven't really spent any time with him to have any kind of real impact. So far we've eliminated 5 of the 11 people in the lineup, but I think we can also eliminate Eugene and Abraham. 
Why? Well, because I think Negan would see the value of keeping Abraham around. He's a big, strong military guy who can follow orders, protect assets. Remember, they work for him now. Plus, Abraham basically volunteered when he sat up, and Negan doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who wants to do anybody a favor. And then there's also the point of view theory. The bat swing was not the only point of view shot this episode. There were actually a lot of them. Obviously, we had the point of views leading up to the final shot, two of which had different angles, and we were treated to several point of view shots from inside the back of the van throughout the episode. To me, this narrows down the list to the four people who are in the van. Artistically speaking, it makes sense to keep things consistent, and until that final scene, the only point of view shots we had seen were from inside the van. Which would mean each of these point of view shots are either from a different person who was in the van, or they're all from the same person who was in the van. It doesn't make sense for us to suddenly see a point of view shot from someone like Eugene. This means it was either Michonne, Daryl, Glenn, or Rosita. Now I think we could probably eliminate Rosita from this as well, because I don't think it would have a big enough impact with the fans. And it really doesn't have that much impact on the story either. I mean, Abraham just kind of broke up with her and Eugene kind of has a thing for her, but she hasn't had a whole lot to do, so I don't think it would really make a big enough impact for Negan's first appearance. It could be Michonne. She's been with us since the end of season two, but I feel like she's the show's answer to Andrea, who is Rick's partner at this point in the comics, and has sort of a leadership role. Most Michonne theories center around the editing and physical proximity to Rick, which again, I don't think was taken into consideration while filming other than to confuse people, so she's probably safe. Plus, I don't think they'd kill another love interest of Rick so soon. That leaves just Glenn and Daryl. Number two, prepare for riots. A pretty strong case can be made for Daryl. He's the fan favorite, so if he was the one to die, it would have quite the impact. Again, pun intended. And when you're talking about the introduction of Negan, you're automatically talking about impact. He was introduced in issue 100 of the Walking Dead comic to revitalize the series. Robert Kirkman worried people would decide to stop reading at issue 100 if he didn't give them something new to look forward to. Thus, the introduction of Negan and an immediate major death sequence of a beloved character. As the show enters its seventh season, it too can use an injection of new energy, thus the introduction of Negan and the major death of a beloved character. Fan impact is going to be a major component of who they chose. And Norman Reedus has also been given his own show on AMC in which he travels across the country riding motorcycles, but the official word is that the new show doesn't interfere with his Walking Dead schedule. Daryl also does not exist at all in the comics and has in many cases been the catalyst for diverging from the source material. But seeing as the show is probably going to follow the comics pretty closely in some of these savior storylines, it would make sense to kill off the character whose very existence differentiates the show from the comic. Daryl has also killed more of Negan's men than anyone else in Rick's group, with the possible exception of Carol. If Negan's aware of this, he's going to want to make an example of Daryl. Plus, Daryl really hasn't done much in the last few seasons. The most interesting thing he did in all of season 6 was run into Dwight and kill a bunch of saviors. They even shoehorned in some Denise crap just to keep him busy. This is someone he'd only had passing conversations with, and yet whose death he now somehow feels he needs to avenge. So what evidence goes against it being Daryl? Well, there are three major factors that point to Daryl being safe. First, we have to consider the possibility that the point of view shots in this episode are all from the same person, and that the different angles are a result of Negan's placement in relation to the character, and not the character's placement in the lineup. For instance, here Negan could be standing slightly toward the right of the victim, and slightly to the left here. Same victim, different blocking. In this point of view from inside the van, we can clearly see someone with short brown hair is sitting in the left front position. And when they open the van, Daryl appears right there in that spot. If all the point of views are from the same person, Daryl can't be looking at the back of his own head. Second, Norman Reedus was a guest on the season finale of The Talking Dead, and whoever it turns out to have died in the season 7 premiere will also likely be on The Talking Dead, as that's been the case with most major character deaths. So the idea of Norman Reedus appearing on two episodes of The Talking Dead back to back seems unusual. And I know what you're going to say, they're going to be doing Talking Dead episodes for Fear of the Walking Dead, so they'll be episodes in between, but we're talking about major characters of the primary series going on back to back. I just don't think it'll happen. And finally, Daryl has been shot. Sure, it's just his shoulder, but he's been bleeding for a few hours now. People die of that sort of thing in the pre-apocalypse. If he doesn't get medical attention soon, he will likely die from that wound, which kind of puts him in the same boat as Maggie from Negan's perspective. If he kills someone who's already on their way out, the group gets off easy. If he kills someone healthy and these other two die on their way to Hilltop, that's three for the price of one. Although fans have been threatening to riot if Daryl dies since like season two, and I always felt that was the kind of threat the makers of The Walking Dead would challenge eventually. Number one, Glenn's dumpster friend jumped in at the last moment and saved him. Let me set the scene. Negan gives his speech. He settled on Glenn. He raises Lucille above his head, and then that dumpster that saved Glenn's life a few episodes ago jumps in front, taking the hit. And then everyone is sad about the death of that dumpster 
the bravest character on the whole show. Seriously though, I think it's Glenn who died. He fits the profile perfectly, and I mean that both literally and figuratively. Let me get the literal out of the way first. Basically, there is leaked footage online from the set of the season 6 finale. I can't show you it here because AMC has been aggressively taking it down, so here is a single screenshot which we will be discussing. A single blurry frame accompanied by a discussion of the leaked footage definitely falls under fair use. So if AMC takes down this video, it's a safe bet they're trying to hide what I'm about to point out. This footage was filmed on a cell phone which was pointed at a monitor which was showing a live feed of the actual scene taking place on set. A lot of people dismissed the leaked footage because it just showed them filming the point of view shot. There was nothing to see but Jeffrey Dean Morgan being badass. But if you look right where his bat strikes, there appears to be the profile of a prosthetic head mounted above the camera for JDM to strike. If I change it to black and white, the image gets a little easier to see as the color distortions become less obvious. Here is Negan, and I personally think that this looks like a prosthetic of Glenn's head, similar to the one they used for Herschel's head in season 4. Curious, I decided to superimpose an image of Glenn's actual head over the top of it, and it lines up pretty damn well. Even his sideburns are spot on. Then you have the fact that this scene played out almost exactly the same way it does in the comics, with the dialogue being ripped directly from the page. So why would they stick so close to the source material only to change the victim? Sure, Scott Gimple did say they were going to make a hard left turn from the comics, but he never said what scenes were going to stay and which scenes were going to change. Also, I think they did change quite a few of the scenes leading up to Negan's saviors, and they could change even more of the aftermath of meeting Negan. So it's hard to really justify any theory based on this one statement by him. And then there were all the teases. Seriously, there were a lot of teases. They teased Glenn's death back in Terminus. They teased it again when they got to Noah's hometown and randomly found a baseball bat. And then they did the whole dumpster fake out, followed by Glenn being the first to see the photos of the former Negan victims posted on the wall. If Glenn doesn't die from this, I don't think he ever will die. I mean, no other death could be more impactful. No other death moves the story further along for characters like Rick and Maggie and the group's relationship to the Hilltop community than this. If Glenn doesn't die here, I don't know when, how, or if he ever will. Seriously, this is Glenn's moment. Taking it from him would be like taking away Carl's eye loss and everything that came along with that. Plus, he just completed a series-long story arc of being the only season one character who had never killed a human. He recently killed some sleeping saviors and then a couple more who had cornered him in a closet, finally turning a corner and giving up that last part of his former self. And really, how many times can Glenn get captured before he eventually gets himself killed? First, he was kidnapped by the governor, then he was one of the first to get captured in Terminus, then he got himself pinned under a dumpster, and finally captured by Negan. Having him survive all of this just to be killed off somewhere down the line unceremoniously would be really lame, especially after all this buildup. On top of all of this, we had the point of view footage of the back of Daryl's head, and who would be sitting right there? Glenn. Artistically, it fits. Story-wise, his death will have the biggest impact for Rick and the gang, but especially Maggie. As a series regular from season one, his death would also have the intended impact on the fans. If he survives, there's not much for him to do other than play dad to his baby and try to resist fighting back against Negan. So he's kind of outlived his usefulness too. And he just completed a no kill streak that would get you vote kicked off a Call of Duty server. At this point, if Glenn lives, we riot. Anyway, that's my list. Who do you think Negan killed? And are you excited about the premiere? Plus, is there an outcome to this cliffhanger that would make you stop watching the show? If so, let me know down below. Also, is anybody else kind of disappointed that we didn't hear about Lucille before hearing about Negan? I feel like the character should have been expecting Lucille to be a person, a really evil, violent woman whose name they kept hearing the savior's reference. Rick would be aware of the Lucille person that's out there and he'd be getting ready for her. Then they'd meet Negan and there'd be this moment of confusion until he introduced them to Lucille and it would sink in that it's the bat everybody's terrified of because Negan is so ruthless. Instead we got this strange I am Spartacus type thing where all of the saviors were referring to themselves as Negan. It's very odd. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I make new videos every week. And until next time, keep being awesome.